Hello and welcome back to the Peter Mackay Motorsport Podcast. Thank you very much indeed for tuning in to this episode. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to it. Today we're going to talk about the big announcement this week in the WRC World Rally Championship driver market. It was officially confirmed that Toyota will take to the start line in Monte Carlo in 2020 with a brand new uh, driver lineup. Three drivers, all new to the team. So they have chosen um, Welshman Elvin Evans, a Rally GB winner in 2017, multiple podium finisher in the World Rally Championship, moving away from the comfort of his um, of the nest at, at M Sport, where he spent the majority of of his uh, of his career and um, pretty much f- campaigned every type of fiesta world rally car that has uh, existed um but stepping away from um from m sport to move to the toyota world rally team they also have Kale Rovan Perra, um, the very promising youngster who has burst onto the scene um, in the last couple of years, winning many WRC2 rallies in his R5 Skoda factory car and becoming the WRC2 Pro um, World Champion this year. So we'll come into the World Rally Championship ready uh, ready for a fight now. Cali Rovan Perra is the son of um, former World Rally champion, uh, for, former World Rally driver um, Harry Rovan Perra, and has been making a lot of headlines ever since a very, a very, very young age. Um, and looks like he could be the guy who may be the one to topple Colin McRae's record of being the youngest ever World Rally Champion at the age of 27. Now, Cali Rovenpera has a number of years, um, he has about seven or eight years to do that um, to become World Rally Champion. And in a sport like um, like the WRC, it's a little bit different to perhaps in Formula One where somebody like a Max Verstappen or Charles Leclerc can come straight in and win, win races straight away, um, straight out of Formula Two or Formula Three. In world rallying, it's slightly different. You know, to get used to the cars, the cars are a big step up, and the 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 stages. You know, the, it's a, you've got a full program of rallies to understand. You've got tarmac, you've got gravel, snow, ice. So it takes a lot more adapting to um, to the World Rally Championship. But we have seen in the past. I mean, we saw with Esther Pekka Lappi with the um, with the Toyota World Rally team, and I think it was his fourth or fifth World Rally winning in Rally Finland. So it can be done. Um, and I think the one thing is for sure is that Kali Rovanperä has been on the shopping list of team manager of Toyota, Tommy Mackinnon, for a number of years now, and I think have him settling into a Finnish team um, although it's Toyota a Japanese manufacturer they are very much run from um, they run right on the Finland and Estonian border uh, I think actually the, the headquarters are just over the just over the um, the border into Estonia as well actually a lot of the cars um, actually run with Estonian um, uh, number plates and I remember when I was down at Wales Rally GB uh, a few months ago and st- stopped at a road section right beside Chris Meek and his two Toyota Yaris WRC um, had an Estonian number plate on it, so quite interesting. But there is one other big name who has made his way over to Toyota, and that is the six-time world champion Sebastian Ogier. Now, this season, um, in 2019, we saw Sebastian Ogier toppled for the first time in many, many years. He's won six world titles in a row, four with Volkswagen and two with M Sport Ford. This year, moved to the Citroen World Rally team, a big, you know, big homecoming French team, the team that brought him into the World Rally Championship alongside Sebastian Loeb in the dominant C4 WRC car. But it was a dream that turned into a nightmare because he won th- three rallies in 2019, very you know, pretty impressive, and three tough rallies as well. He won uh, in Turkey, he won in Mexico, and he won in Monte Carlo. Really difficult rallies to win, 
But when it came down to just pure pace, pure, or what we would call lap time in circuit racing, just pure speed per kilometre, he was absolutely outdone by both Thierry Neuville in the Hyundai i20 WRC and particularly Oit Tanak in the Yaris WRC. And normally Sebastian Ogier is pretty... He's pretty upbeat, he's pretty measured at the end of every stage and when, when the drivers come to the end of a stage, immediately their door is opened and you'll have Colin Clark or Emir Penlan, um, so we, you know, put the microphone into the car and ask the driver while their head's still hot and they're still they're still flustered after be, you know driving a rally car flat out for 10 or 15 minutes. And the, normally that can give a very big indication to the mind space of that particular rally driver. Well, Sebastian Ogier this year, he was dis despondent at most of these stage end interviews despondent that he just could not get the pace out of the car and i'm sure it was would have been playing with his brain you know is it is it oit tanak who's now faster than me is he quicker than me or is it just this car and that's something that a rally driver or any racing driver doesn't want to have that doubt within their head but it inevitably can happen so sebastian Ogier felt that um, the rate of progression in the C3 WRC Citroen World Rally car was not quick enough. Um, there were developments made later on in the season, but he felt that they were not quick. They were not coming quick enough, and he didn't feel confident enough that his last season in the WRC, as he's publicly stated, 2020 will be his final season in the sport. And I think he wants to go out on a win. And he didn't see that Citroen would would give him that opportunity. So. Clearly, there has been something within his contract where he's he had a, a, a get-out clause after a year, or he's just decided to walk away from it. Who knows? Who knows what goes on behind closed doors? But the end result is he's gone from Citroen, and shortly after, Citroen announced, they said, we're out the sport. We're not going to come in to make the numbers. If we don't have Sebastian Ogier to drag our car up the order, well, we're not just going to turn up. So, And that has thrown the whole WRC service park into... Oh, into freefall in, in terms of the driver market. But Ogier at Toyota, what a scoop for Tommy Mackinnon and Toyota. A month or so ago, it looked disastrous for the Toyota team. You know, they they just won the driver's world title, so they've, they won the manufacturer's world title last year, and they won the driver's world title this year with Oit Tanak. Now, right off the back of that, Oit Tanak announced, He's off to Hyundai. He'd been poached by Andrea Adamo, um, the, the enigmatic Italian who's brought such life to the Hyundai WRC project. Um, so Tanak, he was off. Um, he's off to, to Hyundai, which was a big shock for a lot of people in this in, in the sport. But what it meant was that, that Toyota have got this program that's backed from the very top, Mr. Toyota of Toyota, the chairman of the Toyota Motor Company, he backs this. He's got his personal blessing to this program. Um, now, so they've got the backing from head office. They've won the driver's world title. They've won the manufacturer's world title. Then all of a sudden, they don't have their star driver to do that. And it's very clear at this stage in the World Rally Championship that there are three drivers who can deliver the goods for you on a regular basis. And they are Oit Tanak, Thierry Neuville, and Chris um, and uh, Sebastian Ogier, sorry. So if you don't have one of those three, well, it, well, as Citroen have proved, it's almost not worth turning up if you're not going to be winning rallies and championships. So Toyota looked in big trouble because it, nobody expected Sebastian Ogier to 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 leave Citroen in it and to and and to leave leave the team um or certainly it seemed unlikely but that's exactly what he did and that unlocked the um it unlocked the uh, ability for Toyota to get one of those star drivers so now they've got one of the best world rally drivers ever in one of the fastest cars ever built in the world rally championship and it's going to be absolutely fascinating when we come to Monte Carlo you know Monte Carlo is an event where Sebastian Ogier excels he he won it in his first time out in the Fiesta he won the first time out in the C3 WRC I would put very good money on him coming to the start line in January at Monte Carlo in his Yaris and win straight out of the gate he's just that he's that good in Monte Carlo and that that killer blow 
Um, just to, to, to get it, you know, it's such a psychological thing to win that first rally of the season, to put away any doubt that the the move um, to a new team was, was a good idea or, or not. Of course, after that, you've then got Sweden uh, in the snow, which OJ hasn't had the, the best performances over the last couple of years, and then on to the more familiar gravel um, of um, Mexico, where he's done very well, of course, over the last couple of years. So... I think, I mean, Toyota, they must be delighted to get the services of Sebastian Ogier. They tried to get him uh, at the end of 2016 when Volkswagen dropped out the sport with, with uh, very similar to what Citroen have done now, dropped out at the very last moment with with almost, well, with no warning at all. Um, and at that time, Sebastian Ogier went to test the car. He didn't like the car. It was brand new at the time. The, the rules were changing and Toyota were a new entrant to the championship at that time. But he's seen, well, he's watched the whole season of Oit Tanak absolutely pasting him all season long. Um, and he's thinking, I quite wouldn't mind having a shot in one of those Yaris WRCs. And that's exactly what he's got. And I think what this move has proven and what the last couple of weeks has proven is, is that although Oit Tanak might be the hottest signature for every rally team in the service park by being the current world champion and by clearly having the... The, the best pace uh, of any driver at this current moment in the World Rally Championship. But Sebastian Auger still carries the most political weight. I mean, we've seen Citroen literally leave the sport on the back of him leaving the team. You know, you look at just Toyota, they've they've thrown out, they're, they're, they're starting with a new lineup altogether. They've thrown out Meek. They've thrown out Latvala. You know, they've everything has made way. They said, "Who do you want as your teammate <laughs> in in uh, in the Toyota team?" And he says, "I want Elvin Evans." Um, what does this move to Toyota mean for Elvin Evans? Well, I, I can imagine for for Malcolm Wilson in particular, he must be. He, I'm sure he's very proud of Elvin, but you've got to feel for Malcolm Wilson. We'll talk more about him later on in the in the program. But uh, you know. He's invested a lot in Elvin's career and given him a lot of chances, and that that can happen when you're developing young ta- talent. It is if you develop them to a certain level, all of a sudden they appear on the shopping lists of the big, well-funded teams. Now, Elvin Evans has got he's got a job in his hands um, because yes, he's made a big move to a big factory team. I'm sure it's financially um, financially advantageous for him. It's putting him in a very good car. Not that he wasn't in a good car before. The Fiesta is a very good rally car. But it's become clear that, you know, with OG standing alongside, well, will he become second fiddle? Might he even become third fiddle? If Robin Perra comes out the comes out the block quickly, he could find himself very much... Um, at the back of the queue in Toyota. That's how, you know, how motorsport can work sometimes. If your face doesn't fit, sometimes that can, that can be the difference. So, Elvin Evans has got to go and he's got to build on everything that he's put, you know, everything that he's done at M Sport. He won Wales Rally GB convincingly, was leading Corsica until a freak puncture on the last stage. He was very unlucky. He would have won that rally. You know, he's come, he's lost in the final moment of a couple of rallies as well. So, He's got the talent to go and win rallies, but he's got to do that straight away. He doesn't have the time to adapt to the car. He's got to get straight out there in the Toyota and start winning rallies straight away. That's absolutely crucial for Elvin Evans to to go out and to do that. So that's Toyota, but so we've got we've got our our big guys, the big guns, the big factory teams, Hyundai and Toyota, the big budget guys, they've got their lineup set up. Toyota have got Sebastian Ogier, they've got Elvin Evans, and they've got Cali Rovin Perra in those three cars. All on full time drives. No no shared car um for, for that. Whether there'll be a fourth car shared, we we don't know at this stage, but guaranteed those are the three factory drivers at Toyota. In Hyundai, they're slightly different. They've got two full-time guys. They've got Thierry Neuville and they've got Oit Tanak. And I think for Hyundai, particularly for their manufacturer's championship chances, having two drivers, having two of the big three in the same team, I'm sure that's costing them a pretty penny. But 
it's you know Hyundai are at a stage where they're, they're very much like Toyota actually and if you look at their road car strategy at the moment both are trying to reinvent themselves and to establish a kind of embryonic performance sub-brand so Hyundai you have the N cars uh, which they produce and they've employed a lot of really top-end engineers from BMW M and from Porsche and places like that to develop their N cars and the Hyundai i30 N Hot Hatchback has been given, you know, is absolutely fantastic praise for its performance, and they're developing new models all the time. And they're, um, they, I noticed on on uh, on the TV the other day, um, a, an advert for um, their their success in the World Rally Championship, saying, you know, we are manufacturers, World Rally champions, and this is Hyundai N, and this is what we do. So a direct link between World Rally success and um, their road car marketing. Toyota are the same. They've just relaunched the um, iconic Supra. Um, they, their Gazoo Racing um, sub-brand, if you like, is is something that they relate to the motorsport side. But there are um, we've seen a Yaris um, Gazoo Racing um, edition come out in the last couple of years, and I believe there is going to be another one coming out soon, which we were we were due to actually see the pr- the prototype of that car at Rally Australia, but unfortunately Rally Australia was cancelled so we didn't see it, but I'm sure we'll we'll get to see it soon. So Toyota and Hyundai, they're the ones putting all the money in, and Hyundai, they've got two really hot shoe drivers, Tanak and Thierry Neuville. Now their third car will be shared, so you have two drivers sharing one car, so you'll have them, they'll do about half half the rallies each. Um, so half of the rallies will be done by Danny Sordo, who is driving better than he's ever done, and the other half of the rallies will be done by Sebastian Loeb, nine-time world rally champion. So Hyundai really are leaving nothing to chance uh, for what they want to do in the world rally championship. Now, this leaves a very, very large roster of drivers all fighting for a very limited number of seats because the only team that remain in the World Rally Championship or that may remain in the World Rally Championship is M Sport Ford. So the, the drivers that are all in with you know a reasonable chance of getting themselves into M Sport Ford are, and I'll read them out, Hayden Padden, Pontus Tiedemand, Temo Sunanen, Gus Greensmith, Andreas Mikkelsen, Chris Meek, Yari Mati Latvala, Ezepeka Lapi, and Craig Breen. So there's a lot of big names there, a lot of rally winners, a lot of experienced drivers. Um, all could make a case for why they should get one seat, two seats. We don't know how many Ford Fiesta World Rally cars will be there on a permanent basis um, next year. Now, there, this year it was two cars. You had um, Temo Sunanen in for a full full year and you had Elvin Evans in for a full year. Now, Elvin Evans did miss a couple of rounds in the middle of the season due to injury, which gave extra opportunity to Gus Greensmith, who's done very, very well developing the R5 version of the Fiesta World Rally car for the, um, w, for the WRC2 junior category. Now, You've got so many different considerations of, of to what you want in that seat. What are M Sport? You've got to think through what are M Sport's ambitions. We know what Toyota and Hyundai's ambitions are. They're like basically we're spending so much money that we we can't possibly um we can't even possibly consider losing. We have to win. We and for to, that's the great that's the cool thing for us as fans and as spectators that Hyundai and Toyota they're all in. Like they cannot. They, they cannot go back to head office and say, yeah, thanks for all that money, that, those tens of millions of euros you gave us for that programme, but sorry, the other the other guys beat us, Toyota beat us, or Hyundai beat us. That's not going to fly. Whereas M Sport is a slightly different perspective because M Sport are not a car manufacturer. M Sport are a private business run by Malcolm Wilson. They have been associated with Ford for, for decades now. They have run the factory Ford... Uh, World Rally team in the past, you know they they were they were the team that ran um, the Martini Ford Focus when the Ford Focus came in and was launched to the market uh, in the late nineteen nineties. It was backed from the very top with Ford Martini livery, 
Colin McRae was getting paid, I think it was something like £75,000 a week at that point. You know, huge money going in um, from Ford HQ and M Sport were running the team for them. Now, time has changed a lot since then. Um, you know, M Sport, they are a very successful business. They build probably the best R5 rally car in the world, the, the Fiesta, very reliable R5 rally car. They build a fantastic R2 rally car with a one litre EcoBoost engine for the Junior World Rally Championships. And they will they have a, a factory in Dovenby Hall in Cumbria where they make the World Rally cars. But they also have um, a, a factory in Poland uh, as well where they make rally cars there as well. So their business is selling rally cars. Um, there are other little aspects to it as well. But in general, it's to sell rally cars. And the World Rally Championship now is basically a way of promoting their technology and promoting what they can what they can do as an organization but it's a very very expensive marketing exercise as far as that is concerned however what m sports other business is is by leasing or renting the use of a world rally car to go to an event and basically if you put the funding together and if you say there's a big pile of money they will take the car out to wherever it is in the world you want to compete with it. They will have a team of engineers around it and they will repair it and all these sorts of things. They will do. All you have to do is just turn up with your helmet and your driving gloves and a co-driver and off you go. It will cost you, but that's what they do and they have done that for a number of drivers over the years. And I suspect that that may be what Malcolm Wilson is sitting thinking about um, at the moment because undoubtedly he he will be speaking to all of these drivers he's been quoted in the press saying you know I've, yes I've, I've spoken to the majority of the drivers who are who are free agents he says right now there's nothing to say we are looking at all possibilities for next year is what he was quoted saying so is there there is an argument to say that m sport ford may not compete in the wrc either next year now although that is unlikely if M Sport Ford find themselves in the position where they do not have any drivers wishing to bring sponsorship to the team or to pay for the privilege of competing in one of the top line world rally cars at in the top flight of rallying, then it might be that they say, "No, we're going to take our ball away and we're going to we're just going to run our our R5 program." It's unlikely because, you know, Malcolm Wilson's a competitor. You know, we saw when he got the chance to acquire the services of Sebastian Ogier, he reportedly dipped into his own pocket to make sure that he had the finances in place to ensure that, that Sebastian Ogier could come to his team. Now, that was a very shrewd investment. I uh, might have seen slightly, slightly mad at the time, but a very shrewd investment. Delivered manufacturer's titles and driver's titles so this wouldn't be the first time that we've seen m sport put the competition and put the joy of winning ahead of just the pure numbers on a spreadsheet and that's what i i think that's why a lot of people really love the m sport team and what they achieve and what you know as a small little team um with a little bit of backing from ford but not really much compared to the other teams you know what they do is 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 incredible now <sighs> You know, the considerations as well, if you take away the, the financial aspect of it, you think about who are the rally winners and who's got the experience. You know, in terms of experience, well, you can't look past Yari Mati Latvala. You know, Ma Yari Mati Latvala has competed for a very long time in the early stages of his career with M Sport Ford. He knows the team well. He, uh, you know, he um, he's competed in Fiesta rally cars, albeit in the previous rules, but he has competed in their cars for, for, for years and years and years. Um, so he would probably be the easiest fit back into the team. However, does do, does he have does he have the bottle to go and win a World Rally Championship? No, I actually don't think he does. I think that's been proven on a number of occasions. You know, he had he was in the leading car. You know, when the Volkswagen Polo really was the only uh, car to have in the World Rally Championship. You know, he was outclassed comprehensively by Sebastian Ogier and he was you know he was quite quite clearly psychologically broken by that experience of being continuously beaten by Sebastian Ogier um, and you know he spent now three seasons 
at Toyota, which is arguably, certainly for the last two years, has been the uh, the car to have in the World Rally Championship. And um, to be honest, his performances have got worse, not rather than better, in the Toyota team, and has been completely outclassed by Oit Tanak. So, is he going to be a guy who's going to come in and uh, win you the World Rally Championship? No, but probably none of the guys that that Malcolm Wilson is is looking at can do that straight away. As we've said before, there are only three guys who can do that: Ogier, Tanak, and Neuville. So, who does who does Malcolm Wilson put? If you take finance away, who does he put in that car? You know, you've got. Chris Meek, he's multiple rally winner, but you know, tem- temperamental. But definitely saw him. It, it's such a shame because he played the Chris Meek played the game at Toyota this year. He did what he was told. He kept the car on the road for most of the time. You know, he performed well. He finished well in the t- in the championship. You know, he did what he needed to do. He did not expect to be be out of a job uh, at the end of of the the year. Um, would have put. Esa Pekalapian? No, I wouldn't. I don't think his attitude's right. Um, he's a quick rally driver, but if there's anything not right, he will he will not hold back from from saying so. And I think that's 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 not uh, ideal. Craig Breen would I put Craig Breen in? Yeah, yeah, I would. Um, Craig Breen, you know, hasn't won a rally yet, but I think it's just what his performances we saw in the uh, Hyundai World Rally Car this year were were were, were really really impressive. I I thought. You know, you've got Hayden Padden. Hayden Padden's a multiple rally winner and really deserves a chance. Has been able to raise budget to put together a, a Fiesta World Rally car for two events this year. Unfortunately, because of a crash in Estonia um, before Rally Finland, um, which which put them out of the, the event. And of course, Rally Australia being cancelled really held them back um, um, from, from, from making a return to the WRC. Really, really unfortunate. But I think you would see... The one thing about Hayden Padden is you can see if he got a full time championship with for M Sport Ford, well, you would not have someone more determined than Hayden Padden to go and do go and do well. Um but you're 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 just I'm looking at my sheet of paper in front of me here, the amount of options that you have. Um, you know, Andreas Mickelson hasn't quite gelled with the Hyundai over his time there, but has still scored points. Although he's he's come under a lot of criticism because I think so much was expected of him by coming to Hyundai. But he's he has actually if you look at his points totals, particularly this year, has actually been been really, really good. So we're just gonna we're just gonna have to wait and see. I mean, we're gonna have to stand on tenter hooks because it's it's less than two months till Monte Carlo. Um, not a lot of time to prepare. Not a lot of time to do any testing. Toyota are ready. Hyundai are ready. M Sport. The one thing M Sport have behind them is their Fiesta is a quick car. That has been proven. That Fiesta, the, of the current generation Fiesta World Rally car, is fantastic. And if you get the right driver behind it, it's, it clearly seems a, a, a comfortable car to drive that lots of drivers, particularly WRC rookies, can come into and drive quite well. Um, so you, you never know. You never know. If you've got a Padden or a Mickelson coming in there, um, you never know how, how much of a, a problem they could cause for the big three who knows? We'll we'll just we'll we'll have to wait and see. But do uh, it's 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 so difficult. I really hope we don't see M Sport step back from the WRC because they they are such an integral part of the sport. And I think after losing Citroen, it would be devastating for the sport. And it would be such a shame also because they have a car that can go and score podiums and score rally wins. So, and there are drivers available who can do that. Can they go for all time championship? unlikely but not impossible either so let's let's wait and see hopefully we will have some sort of announcement we have the autosport international show uh, in the second week in january just two weeks before monte carlo it may be that a, an announcement is made then because that is where all the rally cars go to be announced to the public and, and revealed so Fingers crossed that M Sport got something sorted by then, and fingers crossed there's a, a couple of drivers that get into those rally cars to go and win some rallies next year. Whatever happens, we are in for another fantastic season in the WRC. This year has been so exciting with three drivers going at it all season long. Um, I think with OJ in the Toyota, he knows he's on his last cha- you know his last year in the championship. Neuville, he will be desperate. He's been so close. A number of times he's won lots of rallies he's got the pace 
and he will be determined now that Tanak come into his team to say this is my team and I know how to drive this car and it's going to, the, the dynamics and the politics that might play out there are I'm sure going to cause a lot of uh, a lot of entertainment for us so let's wait and see what happens Thank you very much um, for tuning in to this episode of the Peter Mackay Motorsport Podcast. Uh, if you enjoy what you're listening to, you can subscribe to the show, uh, which is the Peter Mackay Motorsport Podcast, which you can find on Podbean, you can find on iTunes, you can find on lots of different um, podcast platforms. Unfortunately, not Spotify. We're struggling to get um, to get our RSS feed to, to talk to Spotify, sadly, but I'll, I will keep working on that, I promise. Um, for those of you who are fans of Formula One or Lotus or Jim Clark, I had the absolute privilege about a week ago to go and have a chat down in the borders with Doug Niven, um, who is the cousin of the late, the late great Jim Clark and a family trustee of the Jim Clark Trust. And I went down to the borders to his beautiful farm and we had a grand chat for about an hour and a half. And Doug shared some incredible stories, both about Jim, about the journey to them developing the new Jim Clark Motor Museum and his own racing exploits as well. She's telling me all about his 700 horsepower um, VW Beetle, V8 VW Beetle, which he very kindly showed me after our interview, which he keeps in his keeps in his garage locked away. What a wonderful, wonderful bit of kit that was. So if you if that's your thing, um, do 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 check that episode out. I have a couple of other interviews up my sleeve, which I will keep as a surprise for now. But you, I'm very very excited about them and can't wait to 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 go and have those interviews and then share them with you on. Uh, the show. So I would also like to love to hear from you. If there's any particular person you'd like me to get in touch with to try and interview, please do let me know. Any comments about the show, please let me know. You can get in touch via our Facebook page, which is just the Peter Mackay Motorsport Podcast. You can tweet me, which is at Mackay Podcast, or via Instagram, which is at Peter Mackay Motorsport. Or you can do it the old fashioned way, www.petermackaymotorsport.com. I would love to hear from you. Thanks very much again for listening and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon.